Way Home or Face the Fire by Ja, the survival plan for all human plus beings. Chapter 4, The First Test in Regression to Following Satan. Once the prison and human animal have been designed and created and the souls locked inside, God started the teaching and testing process. The first and very simple test was in the Garden of Eden when the devil tempted Eve, woman, with the apple. The devil told Eve that if she ate the apple, she would become like God, another lie. Genesis 3, 5. For God does know what in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Being closer to the devil than Adam, man, on a spiritual level, and having less willpower, the will is the eye of the soul, and therefore more easily used by the devil, she gave in to temptation, disobeying God, and ate the apple. Satan tempted Eve first, instead of tempting Adam, because he knew that she would be more likely to give in than Adam. Eve, having failed her own test, was not content with that. She had to get Adam into trouble too. The will is the eye of the soul, because the more will power a soul has to resist temptation, the nearer it is to going home. The Lord measures a soul by its power to resist temptation from Satan and by the good it does for others. The serpent that tempted Eve was Satan, Revelation 12:9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out to earth, and his angels, you, Luke 9:55 cross reference, were cast out with him, Matthew 25:41 cross reference. The serpent the tempted Eve was Satan, who, having tricked Eve, causing her to fail her test, then manipulated her and used her to attack Adam. Matthew 10.36 And a man's foes shall be they of his own household, then manipulated her and used her to attack Adam, using her sex appeal. Adam then also failed his first test, because he foolishly loved Eve more than God. Matthew 10.37 he that loveth the father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter or any one or anything more than me is not worthy of me. Because he foolishly loved Eve more than God and doing good and followed her advice, the devil's really, instead of God's advice. The simple story of Adam, man, and Eve, woman, in the trees of knowledge of good and evil, God in the knowledge of evil, devil d evil seems never to have been understood by anyone on earth and yet it is very straightforward and easy to understand god walked in the garden of eden with adam and eve and talked with them teaching them to eat digest the knowledge of good his truth and warned them not to eat from the tree of knowledge of evil satan's lies or they would die they already had access to the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and were eating it and if they ate from the tree of the knowledge of evil, they would then know that they were good and evil, and become confused. In their confusion, they would never find their way home and would die. If they obeyed God, there would be no confusion or conflict in their minds, and they would learn only good from God, the tree or source of knowledge of good, truth, quickly and easily, and live forever. As they learned from God's teachings, they would become more and more like him, until, once they became enough like him, like Jesus' example, they would be pardoned and then released from this planet Earth and allowed to go home, back to their real home and families, out in the universe, and live forever. God was telling them, In the day that you listen to that liar again, instead of me, eat from the tree, source of knowledge of evil, lies, you will die. Genesis 2.17 But of the tree of knowledge of good, truth, and evil lies, you shall not eat of it. For the day that thou eat thereof, thou shalt surely die in confusion. Deuteronomy 30.15 See, I have set before you this day life and good, and death and evil. The serpent, Satan the liar, devil, told Eve that God was lying to her and that if she believed him instead of God, she would be like God, which, of course, coming from the liar, devil, was a lie. 
Eve believed the liar, devil, instead of God, and convinced Adam to believe the liar too, repeating, for a second time, the original sin that had caused the war, and, from that day, exactly as God, the truth, word, John 1, 1 to 5, told them, people have been dying ever since. John 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning was the word, truth in hebrew is nazir and the truth was with god not with lucifer slash satan the devil and the word was god the same was in the beginning with god all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not so god told you the truth as he always does, and Satan deceived you all yet again. Revelation 12.9 And the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out to the earth, and his angels, you, were cast out with him. So God told you the truth, as he always does, and Satan deceived you all yet again, as he still does today. So the war that Lucifer started in heaven, with his slanderous lies, has continued in a war between good god and evil devil here on earth ever since killing billions of human bodies by believing the liar devil instead of god adam man and eve woman were calling god a liar slash devil and the liar slash devil god god says woe to those who call good god evil devil and evil good Thus began the confusion and chaos in people's minds that has continued ever since the conflict and not knowing what is good, truth, and what is evil lies, only that they both exist and the ongoing insanity. Insanity is choosing to believe that a lie is true and that the truth is a lie. The only way to live is to stop listening to the liar slash devil and believe only God as Abraham did and thereby became the friend of God. Second Chronicles 2 7. Are not you our God? Who did drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel, and gave it to the seed of Abraham, your friend forever? Isaiah 41 8. But you, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed only God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Jesus' true teachings are designed to reverse the fall of man by being born again as your spirit, being. John 3, 5-6 Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water human, and then is born later from above as his spirit being his real self which is not human he cannot enter the kingdom of god who is a spirit being that which is born of the flesh is human and that which is born of the spirit is spirit a spirit being a human plus being spirit being your real self keeping the commandments doing god's will learning directly from god how to be perfect god in his eyes not man's eyes jesus the word slash truth made flesh John 1, 1 through 5. The being was the word, the truth, in Hebrew, Nazir. And the truth was with God, not with Lucifer slash Satan, the devil, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him, and not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Jesus is also known as the second Adam, to reverse the fall caused by the first Adam, believing Satan. In the Garden of Eden there was no work, only learning. Everything else was provided by God. Woman, Eve, created work by listening to Satan, and has been doing so ever since. God's first commandment, it is the first because it is the most important, states that you must love God first above and beyond everything else and love him with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength every ounce of it mark 12:30 and thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart with all thy soul and with all thy mind 
and with all thy strength, and serve him only. This is the first commandment, and him only shall you serve. Matthew 4.10 Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall you serve. Adam started a tradition that has survived for thousands of years, which is, loving women first, and God, good, second, thereby breaking the first and most important commandment, upon which all the others hang. This has caused, and still is causing, most of the trouble in the world, and God will allow women to continue punishing men with heartache, etc., until man learns to put God, pure love, first, and woman, sex, second, or he runs out of time, whichever comes first. Man must learn to do God's will and not woman's will, which is often actually Satan's will. He manipulates the souls and are locked inside women's bodies to pull the souls locked inside of men's bodies back to earth and to keep them here in prison. Or the world will continue to accelerate in a backwards direction. Amos 4.1 Hear this word, ye kind of Bashan, that are in the mountains of Samaria, which oppress the poor, which crush the needy, which say to their masters, Bring, and let us drink. Isaiah 3, 12-24 As for my people, children are their oppressors, and the women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and lead thee astray to thy destruction. The I Am stands up to plead, and stands to judge the people. The I Am will enter into judgment of the elders of his people and the princes thereof, for you have eaten up the vineyard, and share that belongs to the poor is in your house. What mean you that you beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor, saith the I Am Lord of hosts? Moreover, the I Am says, Because the daughters of Zion are arrogant and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore the Lord will smite with the scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the I Am will lay bare their secret part. In that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet, and their headdresses, and their crescents, the chains, and the bracelets, and the mufflers, the bonnets, the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands, and the houses of the soul, and the earrings the rings, the nose jewels, the changeable suits of clothing, and the mantles, and the wimples, and the curling devices, the glasses, and the fine linen, and the hoods, and the veils. And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell there shall be stink, and instead of a girdle a tear, instead of well-set hair baldness, and instead of stomacher a girdle of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. Women persuade men to do evil for them, for sex, which can mean cheating on or leaving their wives and families, killing, stealing, fighting, or working themselves to death, just to buy worldly and therefore temporary treasures for them. To quote the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, referring to women as, spoken by a friend of Dorian, they have got it, we want it, and people are making millions in between. Revelation 18.3.20 for all nations have drunk of the wine of wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you take not part in her sins, and that you receive not her plagues, punishment. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works, in a cup which she hath filled, fill her double. How much she has glorified herself, and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, I am no widow, I shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death, and mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her, and the kings of the earth, who have committed fornication, and lived deliciously with her, shall bewile her, and lament for her, when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Standing afar off from the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city, New Babylon, Rome, 
that mighty city, for in one hour is your judgment come, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth her merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men and the fruits of thy soul lusted after are departed from thee and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee and you shall find them no more at all the merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment weeping and wailing and saying alas alas the great city rome that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold in precious stones and pearls for in one hour so great riches is come to naught for every shipmaster and all the company in the ships and sailors and as many as trade by the sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning saying what city like unto the great city and they cast dust on their heads and cried weeping and wailing saying alas alas the great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness for in one hour she made desolate rejoice over her thou heaven and ye holy apostles and prophets for god has avenged you on her instead of doing these evil things man should be learning to be like jesus and doing god's will and should be working for god by fighting against evil wherever and whenever he finds it for the benefit of all mankind and at the same time he will be setting a good example for others to follow especially his children matthew ten thirty seven to thirty eight and surah nine twenty three to twenty four matthew ten thirty seven to thirty eight he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and he that loveth son or daughter or any one or any thing more than me is not worthy of me and he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me surah nine twenty three twenty four o you who believe take not for protectors your dads and your brothers if they love infidelity above faith if any of you do so they do wrong say if it be that your dads your sons your brothers your mates your kindred the wealth that you have gained the commerce in which you fear a decline or the dwellings in which you delight are dearer to you than i am or his messengers or the striving in his cause then wait until the i am brings about his decision and the i am guides not the rebellious his wife's place is to take care of the children and to feed him and keep his clothes and house clean and to give him moral support to keep him going so that he can earn his right to go home if she does this she is also going forward towards becoming a perfect lady wife and mother eventually earning the right to be a man behind every great man there is a relatively good woman man must learn not to break the commandments and then to use his superiority of strength both mental and physical gently along with his better understanding of spiritual love to persuade women not to break the commandments either if not the world will continue to go backwards until god has no alternative except to destroy all the evil souls don't fool yourselves into thinking that you are good you are not isaiah sixty four six to seven but we are all as unclean thing and all our righteousness are like filthy rags and we all do fade as a leaf and our inequities like the wind have taken us away and there is none that calleth upon thy name that stirreth up himself to take hold of you for you have hidden your face from us and have consumed us because of our inequities if you were good you would not be here you would already have gone home god does not keep good people in prison it is impossible for man to do what he should do until he learns to worship pure love god instead of sex one of the devil's weapons and to know the difference between the two 
Jesus gave his love to the world instead of to a woman, pure and unselfish spiritual love as opposed to selfish animal emotion, and voluntarily made himself into a eunuch, metaphorically. Matthew 9.12, the third type. But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they are sick. He involuntarily made himself into a eunuch, metaphorically, the third type, for God and the world's sake. The other reason that he was alone was because loving women in a personal relationship would have created a conflict of interest and it would have interfered with his mission. A good soldier always puts his mission first, even above and before his own life. A man has to do what a man has to do. A wife or mother will try to stop a man from doing what he has to do using her husband's or son's love for her as a lever to try to stop him from doing anything that might endanger his life or her selfish material comfort and happiness. It would have been and was the same for Jesus, and his mission was so difficult that he could not allow a woman to get in the way of his being crucified. Also, it would not have been fair on any woman so Jesus chose to be alone, demonstrating total unselfishness in choosing to hurt himself by being alone rather than hurting someone else who loved him, self-crucifixion. Therefore, during his mission, Jesus separated himself from the female members of his family as much as possible. God has always used man to do his work and to be his messenger, prophets, and all of Jesus' disciples were men. God created man, not woman, in his own image. Why? Satan has always used women to do his work, starting with Eve, trying to stop God's plan by trying to persuade men not to do what is right by using man's love for woman against man. 1 Timothy 2.14 And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Man was told by God from the beginning, Genesis 3.16-17, that woman was not and could never be his equal. And God has reminded man repeatedly ever since. Genesis 3.16-17 Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conceptions. In sorrow you shall bring forth children, and thy desire shall be subject to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because you have hearkened unto the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow shall you eat of it all the days of your life. Enoch 96, 12-13 I have sworn to you, you sinners, that neither mountain nor hill has been or should be a servant to the woman. Genesis 3, 16-17 Woman's liberation condemned. Neither in this way was your crime to be sent down upon the earth, first commandment, but men of their own heads have invented it, and greatly shall those who give it woman's liberation, efficiency, be cursed. Man was told by God from the beginning, Genesis 3, 16-17, that woman was not and could never be his equal, and God has reminded man repeatedly ever since. 1 Corinthians 11, 1 to 16. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of every woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man, praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all as one as if she were shaven, a sign of her disgrace. For the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have a covering on her head, as a sign that she is under the power of her husband because of the angels. 
Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man, in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things by God. Judging yourselves, is it calmly that the woman pray unto God uncovered? Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him if he is not a Nazarite? Numbers 6.2 Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When either man or woman shall separate themselves, to vow a vow of a Nazarite, and separate themselves unto the I Am. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory for her, for her hair is given her for a covering. But if a man seem it to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the community of God. Surah 2, 2.28 Divorced women shall wait concerning themselves for three monthly periods, nor is it lawful for them to hide what God has created in their wombs, if they have faith in God and the last day, and their husbands have the better right to take them back in that period, if they wish for reconciliation. The woman shall have rights similar to the rights against them, according to what is equitable, but men have a degree of advantage over them and God is exalted in power and in wisdom. Men are the protectors and the maintainers of women because God is giving and the one more strength than the other and because they support them for their means. Therefore the righteous women are devoutly obedient and guard in the husband's absence what God would have them guard. As to those women on whose part ye fear disloyalty and ill conduct, admonish them first, next refuse to share their beds, and last beat them lightly, but if they return to obedience, seek not against them means of annoyance, for God is most high, great, above you all. That is why man has kept woman down and in her correct place for all these thousands of years. Job 2, 9-10 Then his wife said unto him, do you still retain your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, You speak as one of the foolish women speak. What, shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Having failed the first very simple test, Adam and Eve were expelled from the security of the Garden of Eden. If they had obeyed God and not Satan, and had passed the test, there would be no problems in the world today. Without knowledge, there would be no nuclear weapons, pollution, or hunger, etc., etc. Woman was punished not only for failing her own test, but for then causing Adam to fail his. This punishment took the form of having to suffer great pain in childbirth, because she had to use her sex to persuade Adam, man, to disobey God, and Eve, woman, has been doing it all day, every day, everywhere, to everyone, ever since. Sex leads to childbirth and great pain, which should also act as a deterrent to sex, to try to teach women to look for love instead of sex, that is, God instead of the devil. After the expulsion from Eden, the devil used women, as he has continued to do successfully throughout history of the world, to create problems or aggravate existing ones. The population gradually increased and more souls were sent from the astral plane to the new bodies and because people listened to Satan, instead of listening to God, the world became more evil. Eventually it became too evil and God had to decide what to do to try to put everyone back on the right path. No one in the history of the world has ever understood why Adam and Eve, after listening to and believing Satan, the serpent, out of whose mouth comes only poison slash lies, rather than God, believed that they were naked and then hid themselves from God. So I'm going to explain it to you. It is really very simple, as you should see from my explanation. While Adam and Eve listened only to God, they knew that they were really spirit beings of light and were locked inside of and clothed by the human bodies into which they were incarnated. Therefore, they were not naked because they were spirit beings clothed by their human body. After they had listened to Satan's first lie in the garden, which was that they were only human, a lie that Satan has been getting people to tell each other ever since, to keep reinforcing their belief in that lie, and using it as an excuse for everything they do wrong. Well, we're only human, after all. They then become mortal and naked. 
The reason why they were naked was because instead of being their spirit being inside of and clothed with a human body, suddenly they were human outside of their spirit being and clothed with nothing and thus naked. For as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. Proverbs 23 7. They had been told by God that if they ate from the tree of knowledge of evil, they would die, and they were expelled from the garden and had to work for a living, instead of having everything provided freely by God and being immortal. Then God set a flaming sword at the east of Eden to cut man asunder and prevent him from re-entering the garden, whilst ever he believed Satan's lie that he was only human. Christ, incarnated inside of Jesus, who is referred to as the second Adam, came to reverse the fall by teaching people that they were not only human and that they must be born again as their spirit being and follow his example or they would never see or enter the kingdom of God. The most important words in all of scripture are spoken by Jesus as recorded in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, 1 to 13, where Jesus explains to Nicodemus that you must be born again as your spirit being, and then make yourself as a little child, or you will not be able to see and enter the kingdom of God. The scriptures were not written for humans, but for spirit beings. They make no sense to humans because they do not have the spiritual eyes to see and the ears to hear and understand the message in the scriptures. Only an awakened and born again spirit being has the eyes and ears to be able to see and hear the message in the scriptures. Eve fully believed Satan's lies that she was only human and swallowed the apple, but it stuck in Adam's throat, as he did not fully believe it. That's why men have an Adam's apple and women do not. Most men at some time in their life ask, what am I doing here? Women do not because they believe the lie that they are only human and thus they know that they are born here and will die here. They also, because they gave birth to their children, believe that they, and not God, create life. Men, however, did not swallow all of the apple slash lie and thus asked the question, what am I doing here? It is the spirit being incarnated within the man who is asking the question, not their human asking it because it knows it was born here and will die here. The simple story of Adam's sons, Cain and Abel, seems also never to have been understood. God told Cain and Abel, after their parents had already been disobedient, that the only offering he would accept from them was a lamb, foreshadowing the Lamb of God, Christ, and his self-crucifixion. Abel obeyed God and brought a lamb, exactly as he was told to do, and was accepted. Cain, just like his parents, disobeyed God and he brought the fruit of the earth and was rejected. In other words, unless you approach God exactly as he has told you to do, I am the way, no man comes to the Father except by me, the Lamb of God, John 14.6, and not as your parents and siblings have done, you will be rejected. People say that there are many paths to God and there are thousands of different religious doctrines, all claiming theirs is the right and only one, but there are thousands of them. God says there is only one way, John 14.6, and that very few be that find it, John 14.6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Not one man cometh unto the Father except by me. Matthew 7.14 Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Jesus has told you in Revelation 12:9 that Satan has deceived the whole world, all of you, because you are trying to approach God your own way, like Cain did, and have been rejected. Go away from me, you who work iniquity. Iniquity, I do not know you. Revelation 12:9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out to earth, and his angels, you, Luke 9:55, were cast out with him. Matthew 25:41, Luke 9:55. But he turned and rebuked them and said, You know not what kind of spirit you are. Revelation 12, 7 to 9, Matthew 8:22, Matthew 25:41. Then shall he say unto them, On the left hand depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels, you that do not do God's will. Jesus has told you 
that Satan has deceived the whole world, all of you, because you are all trying to approach God your own way like Cain did and have been rejected. Go away from me, you who work inequity. Inequity, I do not know you. Matthew 7.23 and Matthew 25.11, 12 and 41. Matthew 7.22 Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. The truth. Matthew 25.11 Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Matthew 25.41 Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels, you that do not do God's will. Why ye call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things that I say? Matthew 7.21 not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, only he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Matthew 25.11 Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Luke 6.46 And why call ye me, Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? Luke 13.25 When once the master of the house is risen up, and hath closed the door, and you begin to stand outside, and knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer, and say unto you, I know you not, nor where you are from. The people who say that there are many paths to God, and or that theirs is the right one, are all calling God a liar. Revelation 12.9 And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out to the earth, and his angels, you, Luke 9.55, were cast out with him, Matthew 25.41. Matthew 7.15 Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. So you know what is going to happen to them. Woe unto those who call good the truth, evil, lies, the fire, Isaiah 5.20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Matthew 25.41 Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels, you that do not do God's will. God told Abel and Cain, The only way, and unless you do exactly, in minute and exact detail, the way God has told you, you will be rejected, just like clever, disobedient Cain was. Abel, in humble, loving trust and obedience, brought his lamb. Cain, in arrogant disobedience, thinking he knew best and could do as he liked, was rejected, even though he brought more than Abel did. Remember, they were, like you are, condemned prisoners, and had already been kicked out of the Garden of Eden for disobedience. And unless you do exactly as you are told, and learn to be good, you are going to be executed. The word Abel means breath of life. The word Cain means possessions in Hebrew. Cain slew Abel in English. Possessions slew the breath of life. Jesus said in Matthew 6.24, You cannot serve God and mammon, money, materialism, possessions, because if you love one, you will hate the other. Matthew 6.24 No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and materialism. In other words, materialism and selfishness destroy good and spirituality, life, and bring spiritual death, the fire. Human society can never work because it is based on human selfishness. A kingdom or house divided can never stand. Democracy, politics, parliament, families, and society. 
Matthew 12.25 And Jesus knew their thoughts, and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. If you have one hundred people, and you are one of them, and every one is out for their self, you can have nothing but violence and war. With the strong victimizing and oppressing the weak, the rich doing the same to the poor, and the clever doing likewise to the not so clever. If, however, you have the same 100 people, and you are one of them, and every single one of them puts everybody else first, and his or herself second, then every single person, including you, gains 99 times. It will only work if every single person does it. Otherwise, the one who doesn't steals everything from the others. Sound familiar? One bad apple ruins the whole barrel. So far, it has never been realized by man, and there has never been peace on earth.